In this video, I'm gonna show you some things that sell for big money, and I'm also gonna give you a preview of an ephemera show that is coming to whatnot. Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. All right, Bolo Buddies, you have been asking for a whatnot show on ephemera. I've got those crazy awesome Valentine's vintage postcards, automobile stuff, so, so much awesome stuff. I am going to have this show on right here, May 23rd at 10 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's a link down below. Click on the referral link to get your $15 to shop. If you're not already on Whatnot, do that first and then bookmark the show. I hope to see you guys. It's going to be a fun, awesome show, something different than I've ever done before. And in this video, I'm going to give you a little preview from a garage sale where I picked up a bunch of ephemera. I'm going to be bringing that, but there is so much more than that. So stay tuned. Can't wait to see you at my Whatnot show. And thanks to everybody that's been coming out and supporting. I hope you guys are getting some awesome deals. So I'm also planning to bring some of these, maybe all of them. They're playbills and they do sell, you guys, depending on which ones you have. Some go for more than others. Um, I'm not sure. That's another playbill. But look at this. Some of them are in these uh, frames. So they're glass frames. So they felt they were worthy to frame them. So I've got a whole tote of these. I'm, not, I'm gonna be careful with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring these to the ephemera show as well. All right, I am under playbills, high to low. I am just gonna show you what I found. Now, this is high to low. Some of these may be signed and autographed. That is gonna definitely increase the value of a playbill. It looks like this Phantom of the Opera is really, um, it says final performance. So if you guys can find that, woo, anything signed. I'm gonna be bringing some, I don't know. I haven't looked through them. I grabbed them at a garage sale. I just bought them all and we're gonna look through them together at my whatnot show. Here's cats. Just different ones go for big money. Now, on the other end of things, you can go and search low to high, and you're gonna find a ton of bread and butter playbills. So, ephemera is tricky. You have to really do your research. If you price it high, be willing to be patient and wait on the right buyer. And again, it's gonna depend on how many are listed. So, look at how many are listed. What are your, um, what's your competition? If there are a ton on eBay, think about cross-posting your item to Mercari and Poshmark. Um, I use List Perfectly and I start my items on eBay and I cross-post to Mercari and Poshmark. That is what I do to get my items quickly onto other platforms. I do have a link below that'll show you how to cross-post with List Perfectly. I'm not gonna go into all that right now, but you guys can check out that link. And if it looks like it's a good fit for you, you can use my referral link. It's, um, I'm sorry, my referral code. It is Bolo Buddies, all one word. So yeah, some of these are in the $200 range. I was trying to get down to some that were maybe in the $100, $50. You guys, of course, can go and do the same thing I'm doing here. Just search solds on eBay. But it seems a lot of the high dollar ones are um, signed. Sometimes they will also have ticket stubs like this. That will increase the value. So definitely something to look for when you are out sourcing. And that is exactly why I picked them up. And I have not had time to research them and list them. So I decided that Whatnot is going to be the best solution. So they will be coming to my show. Another thing I feel like kind of falls into the ephemera category would be um, these arts and crafts type things. Uh, patterns, different things like that. I'm not really sure what all is in here, but this will be sitting beside me. Uh, there's some sewing patterns. Looks like that's Raggedy Ann. Have not looked any of this up. I am just going to bring it and show it as we go. That's marked 1983. Okay, sewing patterns is another thing that is kind of all over the place. If you find the right ones, 
Uncut is definitely better than cut, but they do both sell. These are mostly big lots. A lot of people will sell these in lots and then people buy them and they resell them or they use them. And there's lots of different things that people do with patterns. Look at this one sewing pattern. It looks like it's a catalog from 1942, sold for $462. These are things that you need to be looking for when you're outsourcing. Oh my goodness, $394 for this 1950s American designer sewing pattern. Claire McCardle, dress bust. So something special about that. These people, you gotta wonder, did they look anything up or are they just selling them? If I'm bringing them, I'm not looking them up. So you guys can look them up during the show. I have some sewing patterns I don't know how many I have, but I also have other types of patterns and sewing things. I'm not really sure what is in this tote, but I am going to be bringing these things to whatnot. But I just want to give you an idea that there is value in these. But look, 350 sewing patterns for $200. Now, some are bread and butter. Some are big money. You guys have to do the research when you're buying these things. Now, if I searched again low to high, you're going to see a ton that are bread and butter. Lot of a hundred. Those look like Vogue on the top. I don't know if Vogue is good or not. What is that? National Garment Cutter Book. Here's another catalog that went for 200. So be on the lookout for those catalogs. Wowza. So there you go. Um, I'm searching high to low, definitely search low to high, and you're gonna see some that go for very little money. So do your research, do your research. But I just opened this tote. I know that a lot of people do junk journaling, but also some of these books are collectible. So let me know if anybody wants to see some of these, and I can also bring those to the show. Some of these look amazing. I don't know if I would junk journal with them. Oh, looky there. A goodie pick. I just had one of these in a recent video. If you guys do not know, goodie brand can be um, a bolo for sure. So look up goodie brand if you ever see it. All right, bolo buddies. I showed you these the other night. These are all Valentine's. These are all really old postcards, but I have more. And postcards go for big money. Absolutely, absolutely they can. But so many of them are just bread and butter. So also long tail. A lot of ephemera is long tail. It's gonna take a little while to sell. So keep that in mind if you purchase ephemera. I do have this video right here. I posted it 11 months ago, but it is high dollar postcards to be on the lookout for. You guys can check out that video to kind of see some of the big money items. If you like videos like that, where I pick a category and I break it down, you can go to my YouTube channel, go over to playlist, go down to the second row and look for this. It says Bolo category video. And I have 182 of these videos where I teach about specific categories. So go check that out and just play that entire playlist if you wanna learn about different categories. I also have two videos on Valentine's Day items that sell for big money. And there are some Valentine's Day cards included in these videos, so you can check those out. Here are two more videos. This one is on greeting cards and this one is on stationery. This one's from three years ago, and this one is from eight months ago. So things could have changed some, but this will give you a good idea of different things to look for when you're selling ephemera. More postcards here, ephemera, other things, postcards. I have a whole bunch and a tote that I need to pull out and those will be coming as well. Here is some footage from a garage sale over the summer, and I had good intentions of getting those items listed. Never did it, so I am bringing those items to whatnot. They are over here in this bag. This bag is full. I think there's some additional items here in the front that I pulled um, 
some vintage sewing booklets, um, honeycomb decorations, different things like that. So it is going to be an awesome show. So I have this scheduled. So go over to my whatnot and bookmark it. Looks like it's some sort of hatchback, some sort of Mazda owner's manual. So that could be okay. Um, whoa, what is happening? What is this? What on earth? Oh, it looks like somebody's, uh, maybe pictures of the car? Huh, RX4. So basically it's a bunch of, uh, car ephemera. Oh. Not really my type of thing, but definitely, um, oh, a koala bear. How cute is that? I don't know what that's doing in there. Hmm. Huh. I don't know. What's this? I'd rather be driving my Mazda RX-7. Um, those, I might try to sell. And then this other stuff, I don't know, I may do it as an auction on eBay. I might try it on whatnot, because look at that old Linda Vaughn, first lady of racing. Somebody might want that. Action apparel, lots of vintage advert. Oh my goodness, check that out. Uh, Mazda merchandising. Oh my gosh. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So I may take some of this and try to list it. I don't know, just to try it. Some of it I don't like so much. There's another one. Oh, that's that one. It looks like it's the back of a... Look at this. Oh, cool. It's so cool. I probably should take the time to go through this, but um, I'm just going to do this for the video. I may let my husband look at this stuff. He really is. Uh, he likes old cars and stuff. Um, Mazda trucks. I don't know. I think he likes stuff that's older than the 80s, but... Yeah, it looks like somebody was collecting these to... These are just the covers. Wow, a bunch, bunch of cool car stuff if somebody's looking. Look at that. <gasps> for old advertising. Definitely pretty cool. Now this looks like it might actually start to be a manual or something. What's this? Racing Beat 2020. I don't know what this is. Mazda 929. What on earth? Look at that. That's cool. So you got Mazda 929, Mazda 323 trucks. Those look to be, um, this is stuff for this one, 626. There's another 1987 626 RX-7. I don't know, it's definitely interesting. Oh my gosh, look at that old um, uh, business card. These must have been like, maybe they gave them away to dealerships. I don't know, but pretty interesting. I was not going to leave them in the free box. I, know that. I might try to look these up. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it was the guy that worked there. Who knows? feels like it's got stuff in it. Maybe it's two. Yeah. Mazda RX-7. Somebody liked their Mazda. Got this one. Got this. This is just a single sheet. So the booklets that are kind of seem to be full, I put over there. All right. This one is, um, looks like maps. Two-day cruises. So more ephemera. A lot of people do really good with this type of thing, especially if you can find stuff that people are um, interested in. Let's see. 1993. Life lessons for kids. So things like this, you know, they're pretty easy to list. They're easy to ship. A lot of them are just bread and butter, but sometimes you get lucky and you find something that somebody's looking for. Calendar events, 1992, Mississippi. Monsters, Cumberland Science Museum. So U.S. Space and Rocket Center. So it looks like when they traveled or went places, they just kept all their uh, car collectors. Look at this, Days in. Daygram. I wonder what that is. Is that like a tip thing? Looks like you got some postcards here. The zoo, the Nashville Zoo, nonprofit. Railroad, Tennessee Railroad. I don't know. Railroad stuff usually does pretty good. Broadway, riverboat cruises. I don't know. All right. Okay, this is next. Let's get it out. So this is probably this. Well, I don't know. You saw earlier all the stuff um, that looked like they had cut stuff out that maybe they were going to scrapbook with. So this may be um, what they were doing here is making scrapbooks. So some old magazines, Mazda owner, um, your Mazda husband. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't read this to you guys, but it's hilarious. Um, oh my gosh, maybe I should read it. I'm going to leave the names out. I, it says, dear Mazda husband, I blank would like to invite you to have your body repaired at my facilities the next time it needs servicing. I'm an alternative to high street corner costs as well as VD repair costs, except I do not sacrifice on quality. My experience with you is unequaled. I have completed eight masters and Johnson courses to date and have the sucker bites to prove it on file. Uh, 1977, I was awarded a wedding ring for being the nation's number one woman to you, of course. I service all of your needs, pistons, as well as your rotaries. So the next time you need a tune-up, just grab me. I'll fill, I'll fill all your needs. So that's from a wife to her husband, and he's a car guy. How funny is that? So this is his uh, scrapbook. Letter will be included. That's so funny. So it's just uh, something that somebody who loved Mazdas has put together. That is great. 
I just don't know how to sell this. I just don't know. I mean, there's actual, like, these open up and there's another one in here also. Let me grab it. Here's the next one. Let's see what's in this one. More just cutouts and stuff like this um, that they have put together in this book with the vintage advertisings. Pretty cool. It's kind of falling apart. Um, oh, I don't know what that parse wells. Rotary Connection, the Mazda Repair Specialist. So this person, whoever it was, had a special interest in Mazdas. So that one says 1977. So I'm going to say most of this stuff is from the 70s to the 80s. Pretty interesting, right? Okay. All right, so we've got refill scrapbook paper. Uh, one, two, kind of yucky, sticking together. Three. So there's five of those that came with it. And there's something else in here. Let's see what this is. And thanks for watching.